In this video, we'll be looking at 808 baselines. What the hell are they? And how do we do them in Reaper? Let's go. So before I show you in Reaper, I want to give a shout out to this video from Propellerhead. Uh, this is a really well done video on how to do this inside of Reason, um, along with some of the history and quotes from people that work in this genre and kind of got this genre started. Check that out, definitely worth a watch, even if you don't use Reason. So back in Reaper, let's start by playing this track. I'm gonna play it without the bass. It's a weird beat. I don't work in this genre, but this is what I came up with. And so here it is with the bass line. So why is it called an 808 bass line? It all started because of the 808 kick drum. I'm going to play this sample. So there's a clicky attack, and then there's a long tone. And in this example, the pitch bend is there. It's uh, going down like an octave. It's a very powerful sound. And somewhere along the line, people decided to take the tone part of that and then turn that into a moving bass line or a melody even. So um, for really minimal productions, this is a really interesting way to work. So I have these in the project just as samples, and I've shortened them really tight so that it's just the attack. And I'm actually going to set this up a little bit differently. Now that I have like the sound that I want, I'm going to actually replace this with a sampler. So I'm gonna bring up the Reaper sampler, and I'm going to import the selected item from the range view, and then I'm going to turn the attack down to zero and uh, bring up the release all the way um, pretty much to maximum. Here's the sound. That works. I'm going to delete all the samples and then bring in my MIDI from the other track. So for the actual tone part, I'm using Resynth, a JS distortion plugin, Recomp, and Re-EQ. So let's just hear the, the synth part on its own. And actually, I need to adjust this a little bit. The um, release needs to be around 15. Um, but basically, this is just a sine wave tone played on the MIDI in a low octave. I am doing some automation with the tuning knob, or the detune, as it's called in the automation. And so this goes down to minus 12 semitones. So uh, we have one octave of pitch shift available um, for any of these sustained notes. So then it's really common to start distorting. And I'm just using this kind of the first distortion that I brought in um, that's included with Reaper. And so here's how it sounds with distortion. And this sounds different than just setting resynth to a uh, square wave. A square wave is going to have a lot more upper harmonics where it's, it's even harmonics all the way across the spectrum. And with distortion, it's going to have probably a, um, a low cut filter on it, or it's going to have some sort of natural slope to the uh, distortion. Um, a lot of distortion centered around the fundamental note and then kind of more evenly spread out compared to um, a sine uh, square wave, which will sound more like this. Totally different sound compared to this. Um, if we look at this on an analyzer, we'll see that it is basically a square wave, but it has a different sound. Next, we compress it, and we do it pretty heavily. 50 to 1 ratio, I'm doing like 16 dB of gain reduction. And additionally, this is um, adding distortion because we have the attack and release so fast. We have the RMS size down at 1 millisecond. 
I'm using the limiter, I'm using auto makeup, and then turning it down by minus nine. So this is just another way of getting distortion and, and kind of just making sure that there's no clicks or anything and it all just gets smashed. Next, re-EQ brings down a lot of the mid-range harmonics that were generated by the, that distortion. And this kind of just makes sure it sits more in the background. And it sounds different if you do that before the distortion. Personally, I like it after. So now you just run those together, and that's your bass sound. So um, the thing that people get most confused about with this sort of thing, if they get this far, they don't know how to do the pitch bend. And so we're going to take Resynth. You just touch the tuning knob here. You go to the param menu, show track envelope, and that will bring up this. And then you can draw it in like this to create um, the envelope points that you need like this. I found I want a very specific effect going from like zero down to um, minus 1200. And so I just drew it once and then put a automation item around it. So here's my points. Um, let's just do it like this, I guess. And then so I want to draw in the, the little area right below the automation lane. It's really annoying to click in here because it uh, will often erase what you have. So now that I have a little handle on this, I can move it around and, uh, and put this wherever I need it. And inside of the MIDI, there's not really anything happening here. They're all just, um, there's no overlapping notes or anything like that. If you use a different synth that had portamento, this would be slightly different. You could probably do that um, inside of the synth. I don't really want to set this up again with another synth. You don't need to use resynth for this. You can use any synthesizer that can do a sine wave. That's pretty much all of them. Um, and then you want to add distortion, compress it, add some EQ, and then layer it in with a 808 kick drum sample, just focusing on the attack. It's an interesting sound, interesting technique, uh, not applicable to all genres. It really works well in the, the minimal hip hop and trap styles. It was fun to experiment with this. Hope you've enjoyed this video. Thank you so much for watching. Please subscribe to the channel if you haven't already. Follow me on Facebook and Twitter. Join our Facebook group, Reaper Blog Community. Support the Reaper Blog through Patreon and visit reaperblog.net for a lot more tutorials. See ya.